Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and then you can watch it later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where to access all of our archived recordings on our website. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with um, anyone you think might be interested in the topics we have on your show, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues. Um, if you're not from Nebraska, um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar to the you know, your state library. Um, so we provide services to all types of libraries. So you will find shows on Encompass Live that could be for any type of library. So a public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Really the only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. So we have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products, it's all over the place. So you should, everybody should be able to find something interesting on Encompass Live, if you're into libraries. <laughs> um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations for us for um, services or programs we're doing here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us today is Brooke Zarko. Good morning, Brooke. Good morning. And she's a library director at our um, here in Blair, Nebraska, at our Blair Public Library and Technology Center. And she is going to talk to us all about adding some awesome new collections to our libraries, uh, graphic novels and manga. So I will uh, hand it over to you, Brooke, to take it away. Okay, and I, I do apologize for my lateness. I even wrote it down on post-it note wrong, so I am not <laughs> sure where my brain was at. But I do apologize for that. Sorry. Um, so first to kick off, <laughs> yeah, right. must have long weekend, holiday weekend. Uh, let me let's see. There we go. Okay. So first off, I kind of just want to say, you know, some people know some of this information, and I'm sure for some of you, it's it's an overview, and you you get a lot of it. But I know some people ask me, you know, what's a graphic novel? Because they don't understand the difference between, well, I was, you know, peanuts, the peanut strips of yesteryear you know, to a graphic novel. So they're like, what is a graphic novel? So a graphic novel is just basically a comic book. Um, and there's different preferences um, that different authors have. So I know, um, I think it's Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman, both, mm. you know, they both prefer comic book. They don't, they don't see themselves as graphic novel authors. They see themselves as comic book authors because they, you know, they're like, what's the difference? <laughs> Um, you know, some people have a simpler definition, which is just the binding, uh, you know, a graphic novel will typically, you know, can have a, it's an actual binding versus I think it's a saddle binding where you have the staple in the, in the binding of the book. So some people say, okay, that's the difference is you have the actual binding versus that saddle binding. Um, basically what it boils down to, irregardless of what you call it, it's essentially a story presented in comic strip format. So graphic novel or comic book, it's all kind of speaking to that comic strip format. Okay, and these are just a few pictures um, of some graphic novels. You know, there's quite a few on here. Some of them you may have heard of, some maybe not. Well, I will draw your attention to their Speak, the graphic novel, and Monster. And both of those started out as books and then were turned into graphic novels. And I know, you know, for a lot of kids, you hand them a book and it's like, eh, eh. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not quite as interested, but you hand them a graphic novel and they're a little more inclined sometimes, certain kids are more inclined to read a graphic novel versus the standard book. So that is mm -hmm. something that's kind of happening a lot. Um, you are getting books turning into graphic novels just so that they're available in a bunch of different formats. Mm -hmm. I think some of the authors are, and I don't know if it's the authors or the publishers, but sometimes they're releasing just both um, as options for people to, 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 you know, to at least hear the story. Um, I know some books that I've loved, I've then got out and like years, old ones oh, it's, um, that have come out as graphic novels. I've bought them just to see, you know, how they may have decided to put them in and, and I've liked them. And sometimes you start with this and then say, now I need to read the actual book. I need to know more. <laughs> There's gotta be some more deep stuff I could possibly get into. And yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And I know, you know, like for instance, Sandman um, Audible, uh, it was a few months, it was like six months ago or so, six or nine months ago, Audible put out an audio book of Sandman. So people who who were reading Sandman graphic novels now have an audio book to listen to. So there's even some kind of vice versa going into there. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's fun. kind of something else to kind of keep in keep in mind is they're kind of transcending their format at this point. So genres and types. So I, I break it down into three different three different types. So you have your serialized comics, as as you can see, like Batman, you know, any of the Avengers, Thor. The big publishers for those, um, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, those are your big ones. Um, and that's kind of that, hey, we put out you know X amount of issues and it's like this timeline. So another thing is they'll put out comics and then what they'll do is collect them into a graphic novel with that harder binding. So then mm -hmm. that serialized comic becomes a graphic novel. Um, and I know Alan Moore spoke to spoke to that as well. And he said he kind of viewed it as a cash grab is is the way I interpreted his, his statement. He viewed it as a cash grab because he said they just grabbed, you know, these issues of the serialized comics and threw it into a graphic novel and just charge more. So that's why he kind of preferred. I think he preferred to call it just a comic in its purest form. But, you know, then you have graphic novels. So you see on there, there's some Sandman, there's Mouse, which is very, you know, that's very popular, very famous. And then you have your very old standbys, comic strip books. So Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, Peanuts, what people remember from the newspapers. Um, so I kind of I kind of break it out like that. The other thing to think about, too, for some of this is shelving. You know, for a lot of you, your comic strip books are probably in your Dewey Decimal System or, you know, your nonfiction section. Um, whereas your graphic novels could be, you know, really anywhere. Um, so that's kind of something to keep in mind, certainly with these three types of, of you know, graphic novels. So, I, you know, I, I see this question a lot. You know, as people say, oh, I want to get into graphic novels, but but how do I start this? It's, it's overwhelming. <laughs> I completely understand. You know, you look at, you look at all that's out there and you see, oh no, where do I even, you know, get into this? So basically don't, don't go out there and just say, I'm going to buy every Superman going back to when he first appeared in action comics and I'm going to buy all of it. Don't, don't do that. Um, you won't be able to find it. You won't be able to afford that. <laughs> yeah, say, you will blow your budget just on Superman. <laughs> um, Cause I mean, they go back. Superman goes back, Batman goes back, and uh, it's just not worth it. Um, my suggestion is to fo focus on the classics and these collected omnibus editions. So mm. over there I have World War Hulk. Um, that book, I, I bought it, it's about that thick. <laughs> so it's a big one, but it's it's a classic. I mean, it's considered a classic Hulk book. Um, Batman, Death in the Family, you know, that that particular graphic novel plays into a lot of the different iterations of, of Batman. So, um, oh, it was, it was just in the recent movie, you know, they kind of allude to it in a lot of different comics is that death in the family issue. So that one's going to be a classic Batman. Um, be selective which series you follow. And, and I mentioned that not to dissuade you from things, but you know, I worked in a library and we had a lot of different graphic novels, a lot of different superheroes and things like that. Um, Fantastic Four, and there's nothing wrong with Fantastic Four, but Fantastic Four, for whatever reason, did not check out at my library. <laughs> not not any of it. And, you know, I don't know why, but certain superheroes are going to have more appeal. Fantastic Four, you don't see getting movies, getting miniseries lately. And so that's going to play into the appeal as well. So, so kind of try and pick a few. Don't just go out there and say, I'm going to get all the DC superheroes. I'm going to get all the Avengers. That's kind of not a good plan either. So, so do kind of try and figure out which ones are popular and which ones will, will kind of go. And it will change depending on, as you said, what shows or like you're saying, going right into here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, um, what kind of TV shows and movies are being put out? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. How do you get into that? How do I, how do I figure out what patrons want? Um, so like I said, Batman, Batman is popular enough and he's got so many different forms that he takes nowadays because I know there's a new movie coming out with um, Robert Pattinson. There's mm -hmm. 
you know, like Ben Affleck was recently Batman. I mean, there's a Batman's going to be popular at least for, you know, the next however many years. So a new movie or TV series, that's a really good bet. So Scarlet Witch obviously just got her TV series on Disney Plus. Um, Vision was in there too, not as prompt, you know, not, it wasn't the, you know, it was, it was WandaVision, but it was a lot focused on Scarlet Witch. So you can get some Scarlet Witch, you know, graphic novels. Um, you know, and that's something you kind of have to keep an eye out. So, you know, I know there's a Hawkeye series coming out. There's um, She-Hulk, I've heard, is going to get is going to get a TV series or a yeah. movie. Um, and that's She-Hulk. That'll be interesting. Um, it should be a good one, but we'll see. Hulk's not had a lot of good movie adaptations, but that's a personal opinion. <laughs> um <laughs> Ask your patrons or fellow staff members. Some of them may really know, hey, like this is going to check out or hey, like I said, you know, like I know there's a She-Hulk series, you know, in development or, I, you know, that there's going to be different like a Hawkeye series following the daughter. You know, I knew that was I knew that was happening. So some of your staff members may know, even if they're not into the comics, they may be into the movies. Um, we had, you know, your patrons are going to say, oh, yeah, I like this or I want to read this or, you know. And obviously that's what libraries are here for. Um, comic book review websites are also really helpful because it's, you know, I don't know about you all, but I don't have all the time in the world, so I can read some of it, but I can't read all of it. So that's going to kind of help you, oh, well, this didn't add anything or this wasn't, you know, good. And you can kind of contrast and compare and figure out what's good and what's not, just like a book review website. It's just like any other book you'd want, you'd get. You, you don't necessarily read, can read everything you've got in your library. And that's yeah. okay. That's what these review yeah. sites are for. <laughs> yeah, and and it's kind of how can you route them? So like, let's say they don't like the Avengers. Ah, I'm only a Batman fan. I only want Batman. You can kind of figure out, okay, well, I'm going to stay in the DC universe then, and I'm only going to suggest DC stuff and people that interact. So if they like Batman, they may like the Joker series, or they may like Harley Quinn because it's associated with Batman. Whereas, you know, maybe they just like the Avengers. I don't like DC. It's terrible. Same kind of thing. People have very strong opinions. About <laughs> yeah. 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 And <laughs> so I mentioned the classics earlier. I would say that the classics is a very highly subjective term. Um, some comics will check out and others won't. You know, the reason I say that is so I have Fun Home on there. I have read that. It's considered a classic. It's on a lot of best of lists. And this is not... This is not a dig at this book. It's it's very good. It's very well done, but it's very serious subject matter, and not everyone's gonna want to read that. And it may not check out, even though it's on these best of lists. You know, like Watchmen just had that HBO series, and so Watchmen's kind of come back into the sphere of public consciousness. Whereas Fun Home is it's on best of lists, but if I wasn't a librarian, I probably wouldn't know it was out there. Um, it's just highly specific, you know, it's, it's good. Like I said, it's good, but it may not check out just even though it's a classic. Um, it's just like Joseph Conrad in some, in some libraries, Joseph Conrad's not always going to check out Moby <laughs> Dick's not going to check out, you know, things you consider classics may not check out. So even though they're on these classic lists, don't necessarily feel like you have to buy the classic graphic novels. Um, mouse has there's a sequel to mouse and i know we had mouse and mouse 2 and mouse 2 did not check out mouse checked out so there'll be things like that where this was this is a classic but it's just not checking out so you know there's some that'll go sandman is continuing to be popular i think it, it just had its anniversary you know the audiobook came out so sandman's kind of staying in that public consciousness whereas you know mouse or fun home may not Okay, so what is manga? Um, you know, it's basically, to boil it down into, into the easiest terms, it's basically just a graphic novel or comic book that was produced and published in Japan. It, it gets murkier, or I'll get into that a little bit later. So it's basically published in black and white. It's typically in serialized weekly manga magazines. So there's, there's these magazines that come out, and they'll have a chapter. So you know, it, I know when they were publishing books, there's books that they used to publish, and this was obviously like a hundred years ago, and they'd publish a chapter in like a newspaper, and that was it. Um, so this is very much like that. So you get these 
you get this like magazine and it's got several chapters of several different mangas in it and they basically just put it out chapter by chapter some of them are weekly um and then what they do is they collect it into a volume so then you have your manga volume so that's basically what manga is in its easiest terms but it, it gets trickier <laughs> Um, so here I have some manga. I would ask that you note the wide variety in art form here. Um, you know, you've got what is typically seen as more traditional art in some of them. And then it's kind of, you've got like, so for instance, that one in the center middle, uh, the girl from the other side, that one's a little bit different. The art is a little more unusual. Um, I know Junji Ito, I'm sure I didn't say his name right, but Uzumaki, that art is kind of different from some of the other art you'll see. So it's it's very even, there's a huge difference from artist to artist, from author to author about what the art looks like. So that's well, then, just looking at all these covers here. Yeah, there's not a standard really. No, because you know, it used to be like, oh, like manga has girls with, you know, larger eyes, you know, and that, but you're not seeing that on all these and it's different. The subject matter is different. So there's a huge variety in art styles as well. And again, it kind of goes back to some of that and some of that may appeal to certain people and some of it may not. So again, highly, highly individualized. Um, so other, and I put this in quotes, manga. Um, manhwa, which is South Korean comics, um, is a lot of people will refer to it as manga. It, it's not, again, if you look at the art, the art will be different, typically be different than manga. Um, the other thing that's out there is web comics. Now these are kind of these are kind of really interesting, and there's a lot of stuff going on with the web comics that's kind of exciting personally. Um, so they're found online. Uh, they're basically published in these long strips, um, and that's that's an issue essentially. So that's they published for the week this like giant long strip, uh, and it's online now. Uh, solo leveling actually is now available in bound volumes so it used to be just online but you can now purchase that on a bookstore and i found that out the other day i was looking for a manga and i saw it and i thought you know and that one's gotten a lot uh there's a kind of a lot of buzz about that one about like if you had to pick a web comic to start that's a good one and it is and there's some other ones too that are just as good um you know, uh, I think a returner's magic should not be special, I think is the title, but there's some really good web, web comics out there. And they kind of, again, it kind of goes into that. They're technically manga, but they are different. So there's kind of a different format there. So how does anime tie in? Because I know some people call the books anime. <laughs> and that's always like, no, not quite. Uh, it's just easy. Anime, animation, manga is a book. Now, it's just like the TV series for the graphic novels. When you get, when these get onto these streaming services, you're going to see a boost in popularity. Now, I know I'm not saying it right. It's called, you see on there, it's um, Kakaguri. I'm not saying it right, I know. But it's called Compulsive Gambler in English. Um, that got onto Netflix. I think it was a year or two ago. And then all of a sudden, that series was popular. Um, Full Metal Alchemist had a TV series available and the, you know that one unfortunately the the first television series for Full Metal Alchemist came out before the books were done being published so then they made a second television series so there's actually two anime series for that particular manga um, but it's the same thing um, you know right now everyone's subscribing to streaming services and anime are on there and it's you know so you, you had to buy it you had to buy anime and, and who do you buy it? Where do you buy anime from? You know, now with it's kind of those streaming services have it on there and people are interested and they're seeing it. So that's kind of boosting manga's popularity as well. So again, this kind of goes back to how do I start buying what patrons want? Again, it's just like Superman. One piece, while it is popular in certain areas, there's 96 volumes and it's still going. So, you know, you could spend a lot of money just on One Piece manga and just have that on your shelves and that's your budget. <laughs> you know, Bleach, 74 volumes, Naruto, 72 volumes. Those are pretty long series and that's a lot of money. Um, you know, and the other thing with that is 
one of the things that manga kind of brings to the table for libraries is because there's so many volumes, because you have, you know, you might have to go out and buy it, patrons are coming in because they don't want to buy the 96 volumes. They want to read it, but they don't want to have a huge manga library at home. So that's something else that manga kind of brings in is we have the money to, you know, put into manga, whereas, you know, kids at school may not have that money to start buying one piece from, you know, one to 96. So that's something else that manga can kind of bring to the table for patrons. You know, you see, I've, I've seen some pictures on um, kind of just online about these people's manga libraries and it can start to add up. I mean, can you think about the space devoted to that? So my suggestion though, is to start with some of the smaller series. Um, Tokyo Ghoul has been really popular, um, kind of everywhere I've gone, Tokyo Ghoul has been pretty popular. Um, A Silent Voice is another popular one and that's only seven volumes. So those are a little bit more reasonable if you wanna just stick your toe in the water with that. That's a little more affordable, a little less high stakes. I mean, if you were to go out and buy all of One Piece, you know, oh, well, this better check out because I just <laughs> spent all this money on it. You know, you may not necessarily want to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's the other thing. This kind of goes back to check if an anime is coming out. Um, check with your local school. So <clears throat> I have a patron who comes in and she apparently this school here does have some manga on the shelf. Um, actually, I've got two patrons. I've got a staff member a student assistant and a patron, young patron who come in and they say that the school has manga, but they don't have every, you know, they don't have a lot and it's kind of, um, so kind of check with your patrons again, because this young lady, um, she sat down and she wrote down, I think it's about 20 titles of, of manga that she would recommend getting started with. And so she was it was kind of nice because there were a lot of the titles I recognized and I was kind of able to go, okay, yay, nay, whatnot, what have you. Um, the other thing is, so if you're kind of looking for the mainstream experience, the Walmart of manga, Viz Media is going to be a really good site for you. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. They put out a lot of popular titles, but if you're just like, I want to make it easy, you know, how do I start? Viz Media has a lot of different manga and they have a lot of different genres under with under you know kind of their umbrella so that's a good place to kind of kick it off so this is where it gets complicated because like any subset of books you've got genres 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 um there's a lot of manga in japan is geared towards a huge wide audience not just you know your teenagers not just your kids it's geared towards everyone. So you have these genres, so shonen, which is teen and tween boys, so typically geared towards boys, typically more action-oriented novels. Now, that doesn't mean that girls don't read it. So for instance, Full Metal Alchemist is shonen, and I really enjoyed that series, and I'm typically more drawn towards that genre. Now, then there's, you know, there's shoujo, which is teen and tween girls. Um, Again, not necessarily like keeping you out of those. That's just kind of who that primary audience is. Um, So there's kind of romance and there's kind of some, you know, other elements to it that kind of drop it into there. So then you also have the older, more mature audience, which is that Seinen and Jose, Jose, not saying it right, I know, but um, adult men and adult women. So these series are typically geared towards adults. So, you know, it it does get hard because then it's like, well, if I buy manga for an adult, I can't just drop it into YA. And, you know, our young adults are the ones who are kind of, you know, reading a lot of this. So it does get hard. Um, And then there's even more. (laughs) So I've got two of these and there's even more beyond this. But Slice of Life, you know, that one's a really good one. It's just about everyday life. So, So Silver Spoon, which I have on there. Um, is about a young man who lives in the city and he goes off to an agricultural high school. So there's no big adventure. There's no quest. It's just about his day to day life at the school. So it's not, you know, it's not that action oriented. It's not about romance necessarily. It's just about day to day life. Um, I particularly like that genre out of some of the other ones. Um, Historical is another one. So there's 
all they're all over the place with that one and that's a good thing but so bride story which i have on there is kind of it's set um in kind of the middle east and it talks about kind of the culture the family culture there and um the young lady pictured on the cover has just gotten married and it was an arranged marriage and kind of how she you know with her you know with her husband kind of grows to love him and whatnot um and then it, it shifts viewpoints to these different sections of culture um and it's really interesting, and that one's really good. There's another one called Vinland Saga, and it's about Vikings. You know, so even even if you're not necessarily, oh, well, I just I just like history. I just like history. You know, there's still a genre for you. Um, there's even one. It's called Cesare, and it's about Cesare Borgia, and it's really oh. it's really very good. Um, and it's it is set within that historical context context, and it brings in a lot of a lot of the culture and a lot of kind of education in with the fiction story. So it's really great. Um, gender bender. So that one, it can be confusing. So that gender bender. So the, that particular one that I have on there is basically about this, this young lady who's going to school and in appearance, she's mistaken for a boy. She dresses masculinely. So as you see, she's got a suit and pants on. So it's kind of that, you know, our characters, our main characters think that she's a boy at first. So it's kind of that, She's in a non-traditional gender role. Um, so it's not necessarily, it, it's kind of the, an interesting, that's one's interesting. That's that's a whole subsection of, of manga is that gender bender. Um, horror, obviously, classic horror. Um, so that one's getting more popular. Um, I'm seeing a lot more kind of awareness of that genre than some of the other genres, which I think is interesting. So horror manga, used to be a little more obscure and now it's kind of coming more into um into the mainstream somebody told me that that particular series that i have on there it's called parasite in english um has is getting a series or had a series someone acquired oh. the right so yes you know, that yeah. one yeah hulu i think um is that where it's on yeah yeah but someone had acquired yeah, the right yeah, many of the um streaming services and i always forget what's on what <laughs> i know i know and, that, and that's where it gets hard too to figure out where the anime is coming from because you're like where is it coming you know where was it at so you know even that one is getting picked up and that's an older horror manga um yeah it's it's a little older so i've taken this from viz media this is just these are all the genres that are on their site so you kind of have that huge wide range and you can even get specific with science fiction or supernatural or, you know, LGBT, um, martial arts, things like that. So it even kind of branches out further. I just kind of hit those main ones. So it's, it's like any, it's like fiction, you know, you've got all those genres in there and some of them are even a little more highly specific than in fiction, certainly. So, then that's, that's kind, kind of the way I think you can direct if someone's new to manga or comics is what kind you know you're interested but you don't know what well what do you like as a regular book they've got something yeah and, and that's where that well. historical comes into place because someone may not be on board with superpowers and you know villains and whatnot but they may like that kind of historical viewpoint I mean mm -hmm. that may be what they enjoy so it is kind of like, yeah like you said it's it's great readers advisory because you know, what do you like if you're wanting to try manga, get into this. So, oh, you like Stephen King? You'd like Tokyo Ghoul. It's kind of that horror, you know. So it just kind of, again, it's that reader's advisory and where do you, what do you like and where do you want to go with this? Um, so manga, it reads from right to left. And I know, um, so the staff members here have been kind of reading some some manga and I know it's it's a real workout for your brain because it's completely opposite because it's like that, you know? So you're reading backwards essentially. So you're reading from right to left and you can see in the numbered panel over there, that's kind of, it does work your brain out. Cause I know somebody picked up one and they're like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Read like a Z. <laughs> so then they, oh, okay, okay. So this came before, yeah. Um, and where it gets trickier is Manwa, which is Korean, South Korean, reads from left to right. So, that even kind of throws in another layer of mm -hmm. complexity there. And that one's something that kind of doesn't get brought up a lot, but yeah, um, you have manga, which is, you know, opposite of the English English writing system. And then you have manhwa, which would read like a standard book. So it's even tricky in there. And I know that is kind of a brain workout. 
And even if you were to switch from graphic novels to manga. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's just, you know, eventually, though, you, you just, as you start, you get used to it, your brain switches. It's like that whole driving on the right or left side of the road thing. Mm -hmm. When you go to a country that's the opposite, it takes mm -hmm. a few minutes, 15 minutes that you're driving, I know, at experience to yeah. have your mind flip and not think everything's weird and backwards. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, that's what our, one of our student assistants, um, she was she was talking and she said, oh, for, you know, it's not a big deal for me. Um, I've been reading it so long, so I pick one up and my brain just kind of flips to that that way of reading books. So, you know, for the more you read it, the more you're like, okay, you know, get my brain in gear and I'll read, you know, read the normal way. So, um, don't be afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of it is kind of a switch, and that's where that manhwa comes in, kind of from right field. And you're like, oh, so this reads like an English standard book. Yep, yes, it does. So organizing within your collection so let's say you start getting all this where does everything go um that is tricky because for instance you know every library is different and every library has different space allocations and you know the way they do things so i, I don't intend to tell you what's right and what's wrong but you know like do you put everything on one shelf um, do graphic novels go in with manga? Do, you know, do they, are they in YA? So, well, maybe I want to put it in by Dewey, like the comic strip books. You know, maybe in my, in my viewpoint, I see them as the same as that. So I stick them into Dewey. Um, and then it's, then it gets more complex. What section, adult, YA, or Jew? And that's hard too, because the kids who are coming in who are interested, you know, it's a lot of teens, but you're going to have some of your, you know, younger kids come in and want to want to read manga. Um, a word of caution here is to consider the content before assigning a location. So, mm. for instance, yeah, this this is where it gets tricky. This is going to require some some work on on, you know, people's parts is that you you really I strongly would encourage you to flip through some of your manga because for instance we have a manga on our shelves that recently got brought to the desk and it was a patron complaint um it was called monster misume and it was in our adult section and the young the young person who checked it out um was just looking for manga and when they looked it up in the catalog all they saw was that it was in the adult section mom had a problem with the content um I'll talk more about that uh, a little later, but mom had a problem with the content and brought it up and said, why do you even have this? I don't approve of it. You know, I, I just, I can't believe you even have this on your shelves. Um, so it's just something to kind of think about before you just say, oh, I'm going to put all my manga in YA. Um, mm. Junji Ito, who writes horror, some of the imagery in there is very akin to a horror movie. You know, you mm. wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily put all of Junji Ito's books in YA because some of that imagery is very much like a horror movie. And I wouldn't, you know, I would say, okay, this is more mature imagery. And again, Junji Ito is writing for the adult audience. He's not writing necessarily for young adults. So again, it's kind of into that genre where you have that adult, more adult audience with the intention of, even though we may be interpreted as a certain age that's reading manga. Um, so yeah, this, it, it, that's just something to kind of flip through, you know, look at the, look at the content. The other thing is Viz Media is really great about this. Some of the manga will come with ratings on the back, which is nice. fantastic. I mean, it'll, it'll just say, you know, intended for teen, intended for kids, intended for, you know, so some of that Viz Media manga or just some of the manga in general, you'll get it and it will have a rating on the back. So that'll kind of help you out because that's something they have assigned and printed on it. So that's not even, it already came with the book. It was already part of the cover. Um, I think and then, one thing that is, is something to be aware of about the adult ones and the more horror, or, you know, like an R-rated movie or worse, um, yeah. of the horror movies and some of the gore and whatnot, people assume wrongly, very much wrongly, manga, comic books, it's for kids. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are ones that are full on for adults and that's what they're for. And you yeah. need to be aware of that. And just like all of your other books, but the adult ones like yours was, that one particular one the mother was concerned about, what well, was yeah. in the adult section. So, yeah, 
and that was you know and that's the right thing with putting it there yeah and that's what we told the parent you know we said well this was in the adult section so you know we'd we'd had it in the adult section for the reason of the content um so it had been in there and she said well it you know i just i don't even see because in her eyes she only saw manga for kids so she learned she had to learn a lesson learned yeah and that was the thing is she only saw manga for kids so even though it was in the adult section even though we had taken the effort to make sure it was not available or you know just make sure that the subject matter is adult that's why it is in the adult you know she didn't see it that way and so she kind of was upset and and you know she, she was just expressing concern with the content and some of the imagery um it was graphic. It was a certain subgenre of manga that I'll be honest, I wouldn't typically buy or read just because of some of the content. And I just, you know, it's just not my interest area. Uh, but it is a certain subgenre and it does fall in line with that, even though the content is a little more mature. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. And I, I'll talk about it later. It's It comes up because there's kind of more with that complaint. Um, so these are two images um, I've gotten off the internet um, and some people put all of their stuff together so graphic novels manga just lump it all together you know they don't separate it out and then some libraries as you can see on that shelf it's all manga uh, Plano Public Library that's just manga and their shelves are you know even structured to accommodate that with a slightly narrower narrower shelf um all oh, right the height, you know, yeah yeah there's no there's no right or wrong um some people lump it in with graphic novels and it's just all you know it's all there and that's fine and then some people separate it out just so that when someone comes in and says oh i just want manga then okay here's the manga section so you know it's it's kind of up to you it's one of those things where it is like well how much space do i have what shelving do i have you know, do I interpret them as different? So there is that question of, of kind of sorting out in your collection. Um, and it does get tricky. So, you know, you may see it, eh, I'm just gonna put it all together, <laughs> you know? And there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely nothing. So as we're doing this, um, unfortunately we have all come in at a tough time in the bookseller's world. Uh, there's a, huge shortage of manga in 2021 which which is hard i mean there's still stuff out there that's available but covid has not done anyone any favors um so many areas yeah, <laughs> yeah. covid covid has not helped out um so first off you know manga has to have manga has to get printed and so publishers are kind of still struggling with the restrictions with being allowed into work and and getting work and you know i this has happened in the fiction, you know, fiction books too, like do uh, publishing dates have gotten pushed back. And, mm. you know, I mean, that's happened in fiction, which you're like, oh no, you know, it, it's happened in a lot of things. So it's manga's no different in that regard. Certainly publication dates got pushed back. Um, they can't come in and print books because of COVID restrictions. The other thing that's at play here, it's kind of this perfect storm. Popularity has shot through the roof. Like you would not believe, um, you know, manga, manga used to be one of those things that, and, and I, I say this lovingly because I myself read manga, uh, you were a little bit, you were reading the, the stuff that was considered kind of different. <laughs> um, it didn't used to be so mainstream. Um, you know, you'd mentioned manga and it was just like, what's that? And, and you know, you didn't get anything. Um, so now it, it's just shot through the roof and it's everywhere, you know, it, it's TV series, it's, it's, you know, you see it in a lot more places now in schools, it's in schools for heaven's sake. So, you know, it, it's, oh, they've just 43% Viz Media said that their sales have increased and that's incredible. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure every industry wishes they had that problem. Um, you know, they, they see a variety of, they see a variety of reasons for it. One of the reasons they, you know, I kind of looked into this was streaming services. Uh, anime got onto streaming services. And what did all of us do during the pandemic? Unfortunately, we were inside. And so we watched a lot of TVs for some of us. 
And because they're available on those streaming services, you can go in and get it. And then you're like, oh, like that, that anime was really good. So I love to read the book. And, you know, then it kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, that, that kind of, oh, availability. It was the availability. I had it. And like I said, you know, people were bored and they watched a lot of TV. And, then, you know, so that got to be a huge increase. It, it kind of brought it out to the mainstream even more than it had been um, because now, and there's a lot of celebrities who are like, oh, yeah, I love manga. Um, Megan The Stallion, if you know who that is, uh, it said she really liked manga. And, you know, so there's these celebrities that are also oh, saying, I love manga. I love anime. And it's kind of leading the way for other people to get into it. So it's getting more popular. And I, I don't see that. I don't see that going away anytime soon. Um, it's kind of a, it was like the undiscovered gem. And now everyone's like, oh, manga, <laughs> which is great, which is great. <laughs> We've done so, that actually in my household with uh, graphic novels and comics. Mm -hmm. We watched a show. And then went to our local comic shop and said, I need the, where do you got it? We need to get cut off on this and start reading it. We did the October Faction was one yeah. and Jupiter's Legacy most recently. Yep. And I'm sure they're prepared for that in the stars. <laughs> yeah. Well, even, um, so let's see, Batman, the killing joke. Um, mm -hmm. When the killing joke came out, it was the animated version. It was, it was kind of generated news because it was it was had such a mature rating on it because mm -hmm. it is you know it, it involves it involves kind of as you you know the killing joke and so it involves murder and whatnot but the the subject content was so mature that it had this I think it had an R rating um, mm -hmm. and it was kind of generating a lot of like what you know this this cartoon as people would think you know this cartoon this batman cartoon has such a mature rating why because yeah. that content has gotten more mature and and so that kind of had generated some some buzz online um when that first came out and then now and i know those classic stories that many much of the general public who, who does watch more of the the, the tv shows the movies had prob possibly probably never heard about yeah um, yeah. And that one, again, that one's kind of considered that classic, that killing joke is, is classic. It's very, I mean, it, it spider webs into a bunch of different comics. And so, you know, it's even more integral, but, but yeah, it generated that buzz. And then it thought, Oh, well, you know, I should read it. Like it's got the, if it's a cartoon and it's got this rating, maybe I should go out and read the graphic novel. Um, so anyway, so yeah, it's, there's this buzz being generated by a lot of different sources and, it's it's kind of increasing the awareness and increasing the exposure for manga and graphic novels. Um, so you know why why should I buy into this? Like why who cares? You know why do I care? Um, like I said earlier, audience, uh, children, teens, adults. There's there's really no restriction in manga and there's no restriction in graphic novels. Um, it, it appeals to all genders. So it is one of those things where the exposure is very wide. So, you know, you can get manga for adults, you can get manga for teens, you can get manga specifically geared towards children. Um, and then genders, it again, it runs that spectrum. Um, it can find an audience where traditional books cannot. And I, I bring that up because, you know, there's there's this stigma on books for kids. For some kids, there's a stigma. I, I don't want to read a print book. You know, I don't, eh, boring. And there's this stigma sometimes where, a graphic novel will find find a place in their in their kind of oh I'd I'd read this this is cool. Um, so my husband who I wouldn't say was a big book reader previously, um, I started him with Sandman. Mm -hmm. And so I said I said Sandman is considered classic. Like if you're gonna read graphic novels because he always kind of liked Batman but in more of a vague sense. And so I said well you like graphic novels you know you like you you like Batman so try Sandman you know. It's great. It's Neil Gaiman. Everyone loves Neil Gaiman. <laughs> so I started him on that and he loved it. I mean, he he ate that up. And then now he's kind of gotten into reading more of the graphic novels. So previously where he was kind of like, eh, eh, you know, reading. Okay. Um, now he kind of will find time to read. Um, nice. So it, it, it really does find an audience sometimes, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, the other thing is it can accommodate different level readers. So 
you have a lot of readers who have a lot of different abilities. Um, the other thing with that is, so I mentioned lower level readers. So we've all seen it. Um, you know, a kid comes in and, and parents say, well, where are books for him? And you're like, well, <laughs> what does he read? What can he read? You know, because sometimes they, they struggle with chapter books. Now, handing them a picture book to kind of, they don't want to be handed a, you know, they don't want to be looked down on for for not being able to read as much. So, but you hand them a graphic novel and it's, they maybe don't feel quite so, you know, like, oh boy, you know, I'm in a library, I don't like reading, I'm not good at it, but you hand them a graphic novel and it's not quite the same as handing them some lower level book. So it can kind of find that audience where, well, I don't want to read a chapter book. You know, I can't read a chapter book. It's just so much to get through. It can find that audience of, well, I, I got through that graphic novel. I got through that, you know, and give them that confidence. Um, ESL learners, same thing. It's kind of that, that learning. And, you know, if you're learning it, again, you don't may not necessarily want to come in and get picture books or easy readers, but you come in and get a graphic novel, even though it's kind of got some of that same kind of structure of language and learning words, it, it's not quite the same. So it, it maybe it would encourage them in ways that it might not otherwise. Uh, readers with dyslexia or autism. So I have my student assistant who loves manga. She has a problem with dyslexia, but she, you know, for her, a graphic novel is something she can read. She, she loves to read graphic novels and manga, and she will get through those, no problem. And again, it's that I've accomplished this. I've read that book. Um, so with that dyslexia, that that doesn't discourage them either. Um, Scholastic had a whole article about how kind of it pulls in these different able, you know, differently abled readers. Um, the other thing with autism, and, and this came from that same article, it was really interesting. It it can perhaps, and they this you know wasn't hadn't completely found it out to study, but they said that perhaps for autistic readers it can teach them to recognize facial emotions, which, you know, I wouldn't have thought of that, but it teaches, it can teach them to recognize emotions because you're seeing that on their faces. So that was very interesting. And I, I would never have thought of that as a selling point for manga. So that was kind of new information to me, certainly. Um, the other thing I put on there is art education and appreciation. And, you know, there's, that manga runs that wide gamut and you have all these different artists out there who are who some of them just illustrate manga some of them write and illustrate manga and so for instance like that Cesare um it's set in Italy and so you see a lot of this they talk a lot about this traditional art and you see them talk a lot about you know historical art and so you see that brought into this and it kind of prompts you to like look into it a little bit more so there is that there's that sometimes they they kind of have these things where you're like, oh, like how interesting. And and it doesn't teach you to appreciate also, you know, the drawing aspect of it, because some of them are so detailed. They're so realistic. They do such a good job. Um, so I, I put that on there because I know I certainly appreciate a person who can draw, especially given that I cannot. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So reading the rainbow LGBTQ plus manga. So. This manga, LGBTQ plus manga, ha has been out there for a while. Um, I would say, but it's gotten to be more mainstream in the last 10 years or so, but it has been out there. I know um, I was reading an article, and it was mentioned that uh, there was some manga release, I think it was in the 20s, you know, with about LGBTQ plus relationships. So it, it's been out there, but the popularity has really kind of seeing that growth in the last 10 years. Sure. So with this, um, I would suggest that you look for titles that explore identity and issues. So look for characters who are fully fleshed out, fully formed. Um, so I've got a couple on here. So The Bride Was a Boy. Um, that is a true story. That is about a someone who transitions and then gets married. And that one... Um, is written again by someone it says true story written by you know and someone who transitioned in the married and so it's really good and that one kind of explores that whole story and other things that are brought into it um, what did you eat yesterday that one has won several awards um, 
and it's basically about a couple in Japan and kind of just their daily life and it's won several awards, several prestigious awards. And again, it has exploring their identity, you know, outside of outside of you know, kind of certain things. So and then there, again, there's some other I, there's some other titles on here. Our Dreams at Dusk like is about a young the, man. The stay in the life type uh, genres. Yeah, so I I want to put a word of caution in here. So there are subgenres within LGBTQ manga that explicitly focus on sexual relationships amongst male couples, female couples, um, and those subgenres have a name. And so it's it's hard to kind of suss out to pull out of that manga and that's why i put on there that you want to look for books that are exploring their characters and it's a fully fleshed out character dealing with real issues because those sub genres are focused mainly on the sexual relationships so there's um it's called and again i forgive the pronunciation yao and yuri um the other title for it is boys love is for the the male male relationships and that particular subgenre is written primarily for the straight female gaze and g gaze g a z e so kind of that that straight female reading this boys love manga and it's focused mostly on the sexual relationships uh unrealistic sexual relationships at that so i would strongly caution you to kind of do your research with this um mm -hmm. there are some really great titles out there really great that they're kind of getting noticed and actually focusing on relationships and the people but then there's also stuff out there that is is not going to is not going to be what you might put in a library that you're trying to expand someone's horizons you're trying to bring in new stories you're trying to have representation those mm -hmm. those aren't necessarily going to be geared towards that so that's my word of caution with that um there's some great stuff out there uh, again, kind of like with Viz Media, that Viz, that Viz Media is going to have some probably better mm -hmm. stuff on there, and you can kind of do your research and to kind of know what's what's going to be, you know, what's going to be a good title to put on your shelf, and what's kind of going to be like, eh, that is not, you know, that is not supporting LGBTQ rights and for you know, mm -hmm. whatnot. So, just that word of caution in there. There's good stuff out there just you gotta do your research a little bit and kind of focus on focus on the titles that are going to be a little bit better. So Our Dreams at Dusk is a good one. Um, Classmates is a good one. I mean, there's some, there's some good ones out there, so. The other thing is diverse reads. So again, you know, with collection development, we're often told to put books on the shelf that reflect our community, that reflect, you know, or, you know reflect different diversities, re reflect different lifestyles, and it's the same thing here. Um, so in graphic novels, um, you know, there's one it's called March, and it's a three three volume series. It's about Congressman John Lewis and the Civil Rights Movement. Um, I recently bought um, a book about native, a graphic novel about a Native American band that inspired a lot of later rock bands, but they were kind of relatively unknown. So you can get books out there that speak to a lot of different, a lot of different identities, a lot of different kind of diversity. Um, there's even that Love, Love Fighting that's about a biracial, biracial woman in South Korea. And that one's, that one's interesting because it's exploring issues that, you know, you wouldn't feel like you typically see represented. So it's very good. Um, you know, Miss Marvel's gotten a lot of news lately because it's, you know, depicts an Islam and Pakistani American main character. Uh, the other one on there, Saga, um, that one's got, that one's really popular. Um, unfortunately, I think it's been on hiatus for a while. And so that's kind of really killing me, but it's, it's very good. It talks about diverse characters in terms of gender and race and sexual orientation. That one firmly falls in the adult camp. Like that one should not, that one's firmly for adults typically um, just because of some of the content. Like um, then one of the main characters struggles with addiction in, in one of the, one of the issues. Um, you know, the very first, the very first you're opening on the very first book one, you're opening on her giving birth to her daughter. So it's it's kind of again more for that like you know check your audience. 
but it again it depicts a lot of different a lot of different things that you wouldn't feel like you'd normally see so you know diversity and can be a really good draw in for some of these graphic novels as well because then again like i said you know you've got those like they tell us is you know buy buy and show representation on yourself and this is a really good way to do that so this is my word of caution so some manga has mature content and i know we've kind of talked about this um so that that does there are mature themes and imagery so i do want to go back to that kind of so i see uh, on there i also have over sexualized characters uh that is a common theme in it's called harem manga um and it's harem in terms of so like there's one boy and a lot of girls and they all want to you know like they all think that this boy is the best and they want to be in a relationship with him so that that's it you know and they also have that in terms of women and then you know a bunch of men think that she's the best and they you know want to be in a relationship with her so you want to avoid those over sexualized characters there is one of those things where it, it's tar targeted a specific demographic it's a specific subgenre that monster misume the issue that was happened with that one is um monster misume is a bunch of women who are with want to be with this man and they are very over sexualized um the complaint specifically geared towards there was some scenes in that book that depicted these women with not much clothing on <laughs> and unfortunately they were they were color images so um the, it just seemed very graphic and in the terms of the patron this is essentially softcore pornography is how she put it that was that was word verbatim what was told to me um so you know that is one of those things where you do kind of want to look through it um like i said i monster musume it's it's on my shelves now i personally would probably never have bought it that theme does not appeal to this community um it doesn't check out much if ever it only checked out i think that young lady was just looking for any manga she could get her hands on um unfortunately the the young lady who had it um also appeared, appeared like the mother said she was hiding this under her bed so it looked even it you know she was not happy with us <laughs> how could you let her check this out and I was like I had to explain you know well she had her own library card and this was in the adult section so we had done our part to categorize it where it belonged but um and then so going back to the mature themes and imagery there is a series of manga and it's it is very mature so the manga talks about this this young woman who kind of goes into prostitution and gets strung out and you know then she has a kid and there's manga like that, that it's got these mature themes and mature imagery, and you do want to be aware of that. You know, if you looked at Monster Musume and you looked at the description, you may think, hey, this is fine. But you get it, and then you're like, oh, no, this maybe needs to belong in the adult section or whatnot. Um, it's just something you kind of need to do your research, and those Amazon previews are really helpful. <laughs> and kind of going back to, I think, Viz Media, again like they're like the walmart so you're not going to find anything on there too terrible typically but it's just one of those things where you kind of need to look into some stuff i kind of know what you're getting and i know that's tough that i mean there's a lot of research that has to go into that um so resources new york public library put together a great couple of guides from manga um they're pretty easy to find they do a really good job they kind of go into depth on some of these genres on some of on lgbtq manga they they talk in more in depth about that especially about the the manga that's not written to kind of support those lgbtq individuals it's more just like i said written in terms of over sexualized characters so it does speak to that as well um ala and yalsa i know put together lists um goodreads always has stuff on there viz media and again, I put that on there because that is kind of a good one-stop shop. Um, and then the internet at large. So there is everyone out there does lists of best, you know, best graphic novels for the year and, you know, mm -hmm. oh, best manga for the year that's come out. So, you know, there are people out there who do a lot of blogging and 
posting about this and it's very easy to find resources I almost everyone I think I saw I was looking you know I was looking up graphic novels to kind of see new releases and stuff like that and there was Rolling Stone had a list of great great graphic <laughs> novels to read and I thought oh okay. you would not think to look at but okay yeah, sure. I just thought <laughs> interesting so like like rolling stone had a list um like i think i think huffington post npr has a list you know there's a lot of lists out there by a lot of different people so there's resources left right you know everywhere uh so if you ever kind of were like i don't know where to start there's some great advice on the internet so i you know i don't want to i don't necessarily want to do you know direct you towards certain specific websites because you know i go out and i look for i look at a couple different websites and pull okay this graphic novel looks good or this because sometimes those best of lists tend to sometimes they'll ignore um superhero graphic novels hmm. uh just for whatever reason you know don't know why but they'll they'll ignore that and that i that to their detriment i think personally but um they still got a list of good stuff on there so, you know, I hate to, I hate to kind of direct you to certain sites because they're going to focus on, well, these are non superhero graphic novels or these are superhero graphic novels. Um, so it's, I mean, it's easy enough to Google search, you know, great, great graphic novels and any year or any topic. Someone does have a question about Viz Media, actually. Hmm. Um, oh, hey, and I see you're at, at the end of the slides too. So. <laughs> that perfectly. So um, if anyone does have any questions, any other questions, um, type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, or if you have any thoughts or ideas or tips on um, titles you've had success mm. um, or not successful <laughs> in your library, um, you know, share that as well. Um, the question is about Viz Media um, for purchasing. Um, mm. So if they are school PO friendly, so purchase orders for some schools, do you have any idea how they work with that? That is a good question. I unfortunately I don't have a good answer for that. I know that you know where the way I buy is I go there to browse and then I go through like Ingram or Baker and Taylor. So I, I basically find my titles on Viz and then I pull it into one of my booksellers. And typically that you already work with and know how you know how they do their ordering yeah so i haven't that's not anything where I've, I've bought from them for my library i kind of ingram usually ingram or baker and taylor i usually just pull those titles in look for them find them and then drop them into my lists and that is a good question too is like where to buy these and basically you can get them from any of your regular booksellers there's not like you don't have to go somewhere special to find these yes and this kind of goes back to that manga shortage um Ingram and Bacon and Taylor are seeing shortages um, there. And, and that's where you can see that increase in manga. If you go on to like Ingram, you can see how many people have a book on order. Manga is hot right now. There are a mm. lot of orders on there. Lately, unfortunately, I've had to go to Amazon to get a lot of manga to fill in certain volumes because Ingram won't have it and they won't have it for a while. Um, Compulsive Gambler 2, I've got number one, and I've got, I think, some of the rest of the series, but two is out of print and won't, and it'll be reprinted this fall. So mm. there's even weird stuff like that where, like, volume one is available, but volume two is out of print, and it's coming back in print. So it's, at this point, that shortage is so great that you kind of got to go to a couple different places and be like, where can I actually get this? So you to find the ones you're looking for. Yeah. Um, okay, we have another t uh, question that came in. Um, how do you buy the ones that are written in uh, Koji? I'm not sure, they aren't sure about the spelling, where there's no title written in English. Oh, okay. Um, so you're, I guess, for clarification, you're looking, for, oh, Kanji, Kanji, K-A-N-J-I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you're looking specifically for, um, written written in Japanese is that is that kind of what I'm interpreting the question as yes yes okay um that is trickier uh I know you can because I had I worked with a kid and he was learning Japanese and he wanted to request he wanted to request some manga in Japanese um uh, mm -hmm. 
It's a good way to learn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was just very, very on board with it. Um, he was a go getter, but that was tricky. Um, I think it's, it's like one of those things. It's like getting books. I had to get books in Russian and I had to go to a special site to get the books in Russian. I couldn't just, you know, go out and get them. Unfortunately, that one is tricky. I think for him, I don't think I was actually able to find too many that were written in kanji. Um, Amazon might have a few, but, um, well, yeah, that one's tough because I know I yeah I've, I've been in your place. I've tried to find them. It, it's tricky because he wanted some of them, and I think I could get them on Amazon, um, but it wasn't everything he wanted. So he had like a list of several titles, and I I think there was just a few I could get on Amazon. That gets a little bit harder. That's probably where we're gonna have to get into specialty seller websites. Um, I haven't tried to search for that on Ingram. But I know anytime getting books in a different language can sometimes be very difficult. So, yeah, that one I'm not 100% sure on. I know a few of them were available on Amazon, but it wasn't everything. You know, that's a start. Might need to do some digging. Yeah. And, you know, it's there's a lot of great resources out there. And I'm sure there's some individuals online who can kind of, oh, yeah, no, you get it from here. Because it's kind of like that Russian book thing. When I had to get Russian books, it was like someone had to point me in a direction and, so, which was kind of, you know, unfortunate, but yeah, you're, you know, if someone's looking to learn, that would be a good segue. They say, but, thanks anyways for the help. Yeah. Um, I wonder a place to look to for um, advice. Um, ALA does have a graphic novel and comics round table. Yeah. Um, so I want some people in that part, sub, you know, some group of ALA may have um, tips or tricks or ideas. Um, yeah. I was actually just looking here. I know they have a Facebook page. Um, mm -hmm. I was just looking up on my computer here. And uh, interesting, the most recent activity is a question about manga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So it says, we all know many manga series go on for a long time, as you were showing their book with those shells and rows and rows, but then what are your favorite one volume series? So there are things out there that if you don't have the space or the time to figure out. <laughs> yeah, there's there are some out there. Um, they're in the minority, not the majority, I would argue. <laughs> those those one volume ones, they're, they're out there. Um, Junji Ito, all of his are single volumes, or, or let me rephrase, the majority of what I've bought from him is single volumes. Um, there's a few out there. That one's mm -hmm. harder. Um, cause they do, like I said, they are in that weekly, weekly magazine. And the whole idea of that is it's chapter by chapter. So they're, they're serializing it and they're, you know, they're making money off the magazine. They're making money off the book binding. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I don't, let's see, this is great. We have someone else who just actually commented, um, that in the past, uh, answering the previous person's question about getting something not in English. Um, they say in the past, I've managed to purchase Japanese manga directly from Amazon Japan. Oh, very good. So yeah. there is different Amazons in different countries um, that it, you, sometimes you may accidentally, I've done it, gotten stuck on like Amazon UK or something. Um, but mm -hmm. rather than just going to your Amazon, look Amazon Japan and go directly there because yeah. that makes sense. It would more likely be to be carrying it. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Um, and that is tricky because it is, like I said, you know, that young man, I wasn't able to find all of his titles and I just, I was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, kudos for him for trying to learn. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Anybody else have any other questions, um, questions, tips about your purchasing or, um, what you've done with, um, manga or graphic novels? Um, type in the question section. Um, as you know, we did start a little late today, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> That's what's great about this. We just go as long as it takes to get through everything and um, to answer anybody's questions you all may have. Um, while waiting, thank you so much, Brooke, for being here with us today. This is this is great to learn more about this. Uh, as I mentioned to her when I invited her to come on to talk about this, she presented this elsewhere before. Um, myself, my husband, we're big graphic novel fan, well, comic book fans in general. Um, all sorts of genres, though. We're all over the place, kind of. <laughs> Um, we have some of our favorites, but many of the ones you had on there are ones that we have here at our house as well. 
Yeah. Um, so I was also very excited to see y'all learn because I need more things to read that I don't have time for. But <laughs> right. Well, I will say manga usually reads pretty quick. Uh, so yeah. if you're looking for a quick read, um, one of our librarians picked it up and she took home a few volumes and I think she got through it pretty quick because it is a quick, quicker read than maybe, you know, a chapter. Is, comics are, and these things are intimidating, but they are very quick reads. I do, I, you know, once I sit down and do them, I'm like, oh, that wasn't as, as, as long as it, I thought it would take. This is great. <laughs> I can do more. Yeah. I can read more now. <laughs> yeah. And there's, you know, they're doing so much in comics right now. And again, you know, it kind of goes back to like they're exploding in popularity. They're doing so many interesting things in comics and manga. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really exciting. And like I said, um, even though there's a shortage, it's exciting to see it out there. Um, I've been reading manga for a really long time, um, back before it was cool, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> um, and so it, it's one of those things where I'm glad to see all of my, my giant, you know, stash of useless knowledge has finally come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody else is on board but you already knew that it was that it was cool it's always been <laughs> <laughs> all right does not look like anybody has any desperate questions they've typed in while we've been uh, chatting here so um let's see Yep, and I will uh, get the slides over to you, Chris. I apologize, the weekend got away from me. I will get the slides to you just so, you know, I think you can distribute them and if anyone wants them or whatnot, so. All right, so uh, do have a little technical issues here at the end, but that's okay. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, the show it has been recorded and I'll show you here on our Encompass Live website. Um, this is our main page. If you Google Encompass Live, uh, we're the only thing called that on the internet at the moment, so nobody else can use that name. <laughs> um, bring up, we've got our upcoming shows here, but here's a link to our archives. You just click there. Today's show will be at the top of the list here. We'll have a link to the um, recording of the show that'll be on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel and a link to the slides that Brooke has already sent to me. So you'll have access to those as well with all of her resources and all of her um, recommended titles. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is available. And while we're here, I'll also show you, um, you can search our archives here for any other topics of any other previous shows we may have been done. Um, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just recent. Um, that is because this is the full show archives for us. I'm not going to scroll all the way down, but um, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009, and we have our shows going all the way back to the beginning. So, um, yeah, 11, 12 years worth of shows on here. So, um, just do be aware when you do watch any of our recordings here, um, pay attention to the original broadcast date. Everything has a date on it. Some things may still be um, good and useful and stand the test of time for their resources and information, but some things will become outdated. Uh, information may no longer be correct. Uh, links may be broken. Resources may have changed drastically. So, uh, just pay attention when you are watching any of our archive shows. Um, we do have a Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We post reminders and reminders to come and log into today's show about our speakers. Um, we also post on Twitter and Instagram using our hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation, so you can look for us there as well. Um, for today's show, I had mentioned the ALA Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable. I just you know, looked them up in Facebook here. Um, you can post questions to them here if you want to. Reach out to them with any questions you might have about your graphic novels or manga that you might be looking into. So I hope you'll join us um, next week when our topic will be about library school, um, going to get your library degree. Library workers talk about their library science coursework. coursework. Uh, we currently have two staff members at the Nebraska Library Commission who work here who are, attend are working towards their library science degrees. Um, Amy Irons and Linda Kloss will be with us uh, to talk about their experiences in the programs they are in. Um, we may have a few other um, people could join us as well. We're going to see if we get some more um, people outside of the commission who are both working in a library and attending library school. So if you're interested in um, getting your degree and wonder what it might be like in various programs, please do register for today, next week's show and any of our other shows we have on um, coming up. 
got September filled in. I'm going to have more things coming in for October and November. So keep an eye on our uh, schedule here for as I get more shows added. So thank you, everybody, for being here with us this morning. Uh, sorry for the technical issues, but we got our show finished and got everything we needed to talk about. Um, I hope we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.